Oh, sorry, I gotta catch this rat first. Rats are literally all that's around my house right now, and I thought I would see less of them when I left New York. There we go. Okay, let's talk about Pokemon, the app that is literally taking over the world at this very moment. It's like Dorian, Sticky Tofu, or Vegemite. You either love it or you hate it. So why is Pokemon Go so popular anyways? Is it really because people want to experience the sense of adventure and possibility, or do people play just to fit in with the current trends? Well, whether you're a veteran trainer or a newbie, you may not know your Pokemon as well as you think. So to increase your ever experience, any knowledge of Pokemon, here are eight real life inspirations behind Pokemon characters. The first Pokemon we're gonna talk about is Drowsy. Drowsy is a mischievous looking psychic Pokemon that draws inspiration from Baku. Baku has two meanings in Japanese, one being a Malaysian taper, which is a vegetarian pig slash elephant looking thing, and the other being a mythical Japanese creature that devours dreams and nightmares. Despite its appearance, Drowsy is actually pretty kind. It helped Pokemon members fall asleep numerous times when they were having trouble. So kind of like a living sleeping aid. Baku like Drowsy was also known to be summoned by children for good dreams and protection against nightmares. So something really good to have when Freddy's after you. The second Pokemon is our star of the show, Pikachu. Pikachu is an electric type mouse Pokemon and is probably one of the most iconic Pokemons of all time. Pikachu is the Pokemon mascot and is probably what pops into your heads when you think of the game. So where did the inspiration for this red cheeked mouse come from? It actually came from a little mouse like creature called a Pika that are mainly native to the remote mountain ranges of Asia with 23 species of them living entirely or partly in China, especially the Tibetan Plateau. The Pika is a mouse like mammal that makes high-pitched sounds just like Pikachu, and they are both equally adorable, and some species of the Pika is just about as rare. For example, there are only about a thousand of these adorable teddy bear looking Pikas left in the Tianshan mountain range in the Xinjiang region of northwestern China due to shrinking habitat. The third Pokemon on this list is Magic Carp, a water type fish Pokemon that you literally have to catch hundreds to transform it into something more useful than its current state, which has about as much fighting power as as a piece of sushi. Magic Carp gets its inspiration from the yellow rockfish. In fact, they both look identical to each other. The only difference is the yellow rockfish can actually do damage. Next, we have Emoga, one of the most adorable looking Pokemons out there. Emoga is a flying slash electric type Pokemon that doesn't actually evolve. It gets its inspiration from the Japanese dwarf flying squirrel. Both creatures can glide due to the membranes between their legs, but the Emoga is of course more battle ready because it can store electricity in its membranes. Emoga is known to make puppy eyes to soften the hearts of opponents, and the Japanese flying squirrel kind of has that same ability, except cuteness only really works on people. I mean, come on, just look at it. That thing can kill with its cuteness. The next Pokemon we're gonna talk about is Poliwag, a water type tadpole Pokemon. It gets its inspiration from translucent tadpoles, which looks almost identical to Poliwags. You know the swirly circle on the Poliwag's belly that you thought was kind of cute. Yeah, well, that's not cute at all. It's actually kind of gross because that's based on the translucent tadpole's guts. Yeah, guts. Since translucent tadpoles are see-through, we can see the movements of their swirly guts. Take a look. You'll never see Poliwag the same way again. Number six on our list is another weak Pokemon that shows up a lot and is one of Ash's first. Caterpie. And of course, just by taking one look at it, it's clear that Caterpies are based on caterpillars. But the specific design of the Caterpie is based on the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Caterpillar. I mean, it literally looks like someone took that caterpillar and plucked it directly into the game. Next, we have Vileplume. Vileplume has beady red eyes, and its distinct feature is a massive flower growing out of its head. The flower is said to be so heavy that the Pokemon itself has trouble supporting it, which sort of makes sense because this Pokemon is based on the Raphalacia arnoldii, the largest flower in the world. This flower is as rare as this Pokemon and is found in the rainforests of Indonesia. Glad we don't have to travel all the way there to catch this guy. The flower can grow to be three feet across and weigh up to 15 pounds. Just like the Pokemon, Raphalacia's special ability happens when it blooms. It emits an odor that resembles rotting meat. This odor attracts insects that pollinates the plant. Next, we move on to what I consider a pretty terrifying Pokemon, both in the
the game and its real life inspiration. The Victory Bell is based on pitcher plants, and these things are carnivorous and will eat basically anything. Mouse, birds, humans, okay, maybe not humans, but I think only because they're not big enough. Finally, we have Love Disc, a water type heart shaped Pokemon. If you rotate a heart 90 degrees, draw some eyes and a big mouth, you will have yourself a Love Disc. Love Disc is based on a fish called Kissing Gorami. Now, if you're wondering if the fish actually kisses, the answer is yes. But in their case, kissing equals fighting, which that was the case with people here, right? You get mad at someone, you wanna hit them, and then you just, you know. Give him a kiss. Okay, I gotta admit, I play this game a lot. I wish I had more time to play this game, and I'm doing pathetically, actually. So, the most powerful guy I have here is a blast blaster turtle thing, blast toys, at like 1100. That's all I got. And then I got like a Flareon and a Sparky, but they're both below 1000 CP. The next strongest guy I have is a Tangela. This is so sad. So I see all these people, I drive by um, like gyms and or walk by gyms and there's always like a Dragonite there. Where are you guys finding these things? I mean, all I catch are rats and Golbats and other kinds of bats and a bunch of clams and snakes. That's all I got. So if you guys live around the Bay Area, let me know what are some good Pokemon places I can go to kind of catch some of the rarer ones. Also, did you know that there are some Pokemon in the game that are truly terrifying and they are based on truly terrifying creatures. We're gonna get to that in a separate video. Thank you all so much for watching this video. See you later.